Hi everyone, my name is Jiří Chaloupka and I will go through L2VPN point-to-point -point service provisioning demonstration to give you a taste of our Agile Kiri Ethernet solution. As you will see, this demonstration is based on segment routing, XTC, which is our implementation of path computation element and network services orchestrator. First, let's have a look at the Agile Kiri Ethernet and why we provide this solution. Jack Ethernet is about simplification, simplification of transport, services and provisioning. And this is the right way how to get real SDN enabled network as uh, SDN is about programmability, orchestration, and this can be done only when we will dramatically simplify current network. The protocol stack on uh, the left side is uh, probably part of your network. From the bottom you can see IP, IGP, MPLS LDP for transport, RSVPT for traffic engineering, BGPLU, and then for services uh, LDP and BGP. By Agile Key Ethernet, we can squeeze protocol stack to segment routing for uh, transport and BGP for services. And this we call SDN enabled network. Let's see some uh, details and clarify what we will cover by this demonstration. So again, from the bottom, you can see the transport is based on uh, the segment routing. Then we will, because we will provision L2 VPN point to point service, we will use the static pseudo wire to get rid of LDP. Then we will use network services orchestrator for uh, service provisioning. And uh, we will use the XTC, uh, which is our implementation of path computation element. Now we can see a JRK Ethernet lab topology. You can see two IGP domains the green one and the black one. Both of them are based on segment routing and ISIS. But this is completely dependent. We can use OSPF as well. There is not redistribution or BGPLU between these two IGP domains. It means that both domains are completely independent. And uh, router 18, where we will provision the service, doesn't know the path to route 20, which will be the remote end of the service and vice versa. Because of this, we will use XTC, which is our implementation of path computation element on iOS XR. And we will also use the BGPLS to get whole network topology from border router. In our case, border router is router 3. And uh, because of this, uh, XTC will be able to compute the path across whole the network. As I've already mentioned, we will provision L2 VPN point-to-point -point service between router 18 and router 20 through Network Services Orchestrator. Once Network Services Orchestrator will provision the service on router 18 and router 20, router 18 will ask XTC to provide path to reach router 20, as XTC knows the whole network topology. Same router 20 will ask XTC to provide path to reach router 18. In the first use case, both routers will ask XTC to provide shortest path based on IGP metrics. You can see this path marked as the blue one. To provision the service, we will use the segment routing traffic engineering infrastructure on both router 18 and router 20. And you will see from the configuration more details. Now we can see CLI of uh, router 18 and uh, network services orchestrator CLI. So first, let's check configuration of uh, L2 VPN on uh, router 18. You can see that we don't have any L2 VPN configuration on router 18. And we can also check the configuration of MPS traffic engineering tunnels. And uh, also we can see that we don't have uh, any traffic engineering tunnels on router 18. So now we can uh, switch to network services orchestrator CLI and start to provision the service. So first, we will switch to configuration mode. Uh, we, will, uh, we will go to services, uh, ACE L2 VPN, which is a service template for, uh, for uh, Jackery Ethernet L2 VPN service, which I already uploaded to Network Services Orchestrator. We will uh, use point to point. Uh, then we need to pick up unique name for, uh, for the service. Uh, we will take, for example, ACE, and we need to also specify the unique service ID. Later you will see 
uh, how we are mapping this uh, unique name and uh, unique service ID to configuration on the device. So for example, we will pick up the service ID 100. Then we need to uh, configure the uh, service class. Service class is, uh, in our case, will be the IGP because we want to follow IGP, IGP metric. Then we have to configure the devices. So uh, we have uh, router 18 and router 20. Uh, on devices, uh, we need to specify the service, service loopback, which uh, will be the uh, loopback, uh, loopback 0 and uh, at the circuit. Uh, we will use the, the gigabit 0 slash 1 slash 1 slash 18 uh, and we will do the same configuration for for uh, router uh, router 20. So again service loopback 0 and attach circuit 18. Now we can commit the configuration, uh, network services orchestrator is now verifying the, the configuration and will deploy the service on router 18 and uh, router, router 20. Now we can uh, show run services ASL2 VPN. We can see configuration of uh, all the service on uh, network services orchestrator. So we can go to uh, router 18 and see the configuration of L2 VPN service. So for L2 VPN service, we have a pseudo wire class uh, ACE. This is uh, same as uh, as the unique name of the of the service which we specify on uh, on NSO. Then we have uh, encapsulation and PLS, and we have prefer part interface tunnel TE100. So later we will we will see uh, the configuration of uh, tunnel TE100. Then we have um, the configuration of point to point service. Again, we are using the same unique name ACE. Uh, we are using the interface. Um, gigabit 0 slash 1 slash 1 slash 18 which is at each circuit which we specify in, in uh, by uh, by the NSO uh, then the neighbor is uh, uh, 1.1.1.20 uh, which is uh, the loopback interface of uh, router 20 and again pseudo wire ID is uh, 100 as I said we will use the static pseudo wire so uh, we have MPL static label local 100 and a remote 100 as well Again, in this case, we are using uh, the, the local and remote label, uh, same as a service ID. In your case, you can definitely use the different logic how to map uh, the local and remote label. We wanted to have the simple example how to, how to configure this. And then we have again pseudo wire class ACE. So basically, we are mapping this uh, pseudo wire class ACE to uh, this point-to-point uh, -point service. Show MPLS uh, traffic engineering tunnels. Well, first uh, we can see that we have a uh, traffic engineering tunnel 100. Uh, operation is up, valid, signal is in co signaling is connected. So now we can see how uh, we are getting the path. Segment routing path, PCE, computed path, it means that uh, router uh, 18 ask uh, XTC to, uh, to get a path to route 20. And uh, the first segment is uh, label 1603. 1603 is a prefix it of router 3, which is a border router. And uh, segment 1 is 16020, which is a uh, uh, prefix it of router 20, so destination of, uh, of, the, uh, of the service. So from the first use case, you could see that we are able to provision the point-to-point -point service through Network Services Orchestrator. And we were able to follow the IGP path uh, provided by uh, XTC. So again, when we look to the label stack, uh, the first we need to know the, uh, the prefix set of the, of the border router, which is 1603 is prefix set of router 3. And then oh, we have a destination because router 3 already knows where is, a, where is the destination. And then we have just a service label and, uh, and the data. So right now, what we will do, we will go to the, to the second use case where um, we will provision again the same service to the NSO, to Network Services Orchestrator. 
But right now, router 18 and router 20 will ask uh, XTC to provide uh, the, the, uh, the path based on the traffic engineering metrics. What we specify on, uh, on uh, router 2 and router 6 that uh, these links between router 18 and router 2, this particular link, and uh, this link between router 6 and router 20 are like low latency path. So then we have a path marked as a, as a red one which will follow low lat latency path. So in a second use case, we will again provision the, the uh, L2 VPN point-to-point -point service through NSO, but uh, router 18 and router 20 will ask to provide low latency path. They will ask XTC to provide this low latency path. So right now, again, we can go to lab and uh, we, can, uh, we can provision the service through NSO. So now we will provision the uh, second use case. So again, we go to configuration mode on uh, Network Services Orchestrator. Again, uh, services, ACE, L2 VPN, point-to-point -point service. We have to pick up unique name, ACE, low latency in this case. And uh, again, service ID. Last time we uh, pick up the, the 100, we can, we can take 200 right now. Um, Service class in this case is more important than in previous case because we want to follow low latency path. So we are saying that we want to have service class low latency. Then same like in the uh, first use case, we need to configure devices. So router 18, again, we will use the same service loopback zero, gigabit ethernet, uh, we will have a different uh, attached circuit. So right now we will use the zero slash one slash one slash 16 and uh, we will do we will do same for uh, router 20 so service rubeck 0 and gigabit 0 slash 16 commit and uh, in the meantime the configuration will be deployed to a router 18 and a router 20 so we can see, show running config, ACE, uh, services, uh, services, uh, ACE L2 VPN, and see the configuration for the second service. Uh, it's pretty much the same, except uh, uh, the service class, low latency. So we can go to show uh, uh, to, to router 18 to see the configuration of L2 VPN and VPN service. So show run L2 VPN. Now, what we added, we added uh, one more uh, one more service, uh, which is uh, ACE low latency, preferred path is tunnel TE200. And uh, here is also the point-to-point -point configuration uh, for, uh, for point to point service. Uh, again, attached circuit and neighbor is the same, 1.1.110, pseudo wire ID 200. And uh, again, we are configuring the static pseudo wire, so it means static labels, local label is 200, remote label is also 200, and pseudo wire class is low latency. Now what uh, will be more interesting is uh, show MPLS traffic in generic tunnels. You can see that uh, operation status is up, wallet signaling is connected. Right now we want to see the most interesting part, which is uh, how the path is provided. Again, the path is provided by PCE, path computation element. And uh, now we see the difference uh, against the first use case. So first, the segment, uh, segment uh, zero is uh, adjacency set between the router 18 and the route 2. Because if you remember, we said that this link is a uh, low latency, latency link between a router 18 and a router 2. So we are following this low latency path. Then the next uh, hop is uh, 1604, which is the route, uh, border router between uh, two IGP domains. Then we need to reach uh, 1606, because again, we want to follow the low latency path, which is the link between the router 6 and router 20. And again, we can see the the adjacency sit there. If we uh, want to check the configuration in face uh, uh, tunnel TE200, we will see that uh, the path selection is metric TE 
by this we will tell to 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 XTC that we want to follow uh, the traffic engineering metrics, which is in our case low latency path. So now when we see again the Jackie Ethernet lab topology, uh, we can uh, see uh, the label stack for the second use case. So how um, uh, we already mentioned, you know, the first is uh, adjacency set because we want to follow uh, the link between the router 18 and router 2 because it's a low latency path for us. Then we need to reach router 4, which is 1604. Then we need to reach 1606, which is router 6. And the last hop is again the adjacency set, which is the, the set allocated by router 6 to follow this low latency path between router 6 and router 20. So right now, that's all from uh, this demonstration. And uh, stay tuned for another demonstration for Jarkey Ethernet. Thank you for watching.